Hello there. Just when you think the Brexit timetable is settling down, up pops the Prime Minister with comments that hint at an extension to the transition phase. It seems that, despite stressing that UK borders and customs would be in place on time, Theresa May has suggested at a Commons committee that the Brexit timetable may be a bit more fluid than we had thought. In an admission that is likely to alarm Tory Brexiteers, the Prime Minister said that when the detail of the administrative changes that might be needed was examined, the timetables that had been agreed so far might need to be revised, reports The Times. Appearing before the Commons Liaison Committee, Theresa May warned that I think it is fair to say that As we get into the detail, and as we look at these arrangements, then what becomes clear is that sometimes the timetables that have originally been set are not the timetables that are necessary when you actually start to look at the detail and when you delve into what it is you really want to be able to achieve. So more delay and opportunity for Remainers to try and wreak their anti-democratic havoc. The real culprit here, though, is the lack of planning for triggering Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty from the outset. Now, I'm not talking about when the decision to hold the EU referendum was made. I'm talking about the moment it was decided to include such an article in the Lisbon Treaty, which came into force in December 2007. Plans are made across Whitehall departments for all sorts of things, from conflict to plague, from weather to pollution and civil defence. But no plan to exit a massive financial and political commitment such as the EU when there is a clear legal clause allowing for it. It is absolutely clear then that the only contingency plan ever made was and is to try and keep us in. Moving on, vehicle manufacturer Jaguar Land Rover has landed a £1.2 billion deal to supply Google's driverless car arm, Waymo, with self-driving Jaguar I-Pace vehicles. Jaguar Land Rover and Waymo today announce a long-term strategic partnership. Together, the two companies will develop the world's first premium self-driving electric vehicle for Waymo's driverless transportation service, says Jaguar Land Rover. These vehicles have been tested on the Phoenix public roads, with the only human interaction being someone in the back of the car with an emergency stop button. And that investment comes despite the best efforts of Remainers to put as much uncertainty into the post-Brexit economy as they can manage. In the meantime, it may be that Eurozone GDP growth has peaked, says The Telegraph. Pointing to a recent slump in lending to firms, a drop in business confidence shown in last week's IHS market Purchasing Managers Index, as well as a fall in the Eurozone's own economic sentiment indicator. Commentators say this all signals softer growth ahead, and Moritz Degler of Oxford Economics added that it was consistent with higher political uncertainty in post-election Italy and the spectre of rising protectionism. To be fair, though, there are indications that this is part of a global slowdown, which may well affect the UK too. But it does show that the Eurozone and the wider EU are as much driven by outside forces as any other entity. But the EU27 and Eurozone may not be as flexible as a post-Brexit UK to bend with the winds of economic change. Finally... Following on from yesterday's story about allegations that the Leave campaign used a second campaign group to hide an overspend, with Guido Fawkes saying on his blog that Remain were even worse culprits, Michael Mosbacher, writing in CapEx, points out that it does not invalidate the referendum result because the courts cannot make the government hold another referendum. The legal answer is clear. 
unlike in parliamentary or local elections, overspending does not invalidate a referendum result under any circumstances. The courts cannot order a rerun. If the claims were to be proved, vote leave could be fined, and there could be personal legal consequences for those involved, but nothing else, he writes. He also reports that a study by Harry Pickard of Sheffield University showed that the government's own £9 million leaflet campaign had a major impact on the referendum result. Those who read the leaflet were 3% more likely to vote Remain, and, among Conservative voters, exposure to the leaflet reduced the likelihood of voting Leave by over 6%, he said. So it is quite clear from all the available evidence that it was Remain that held the stacked deck, and Leave still won. So, advice to any Remainers left out there. Don't get left behind in the past. Get on board the big red Brexit bus. Destination full Brexit. There's seats for everyone. But it seems that one anti-Brexit group is not listening. Best for Britain has started a massive half a million pound poster campaign today called The People's Vote. And the aim of this group, founded by Gina Miller, is to stop Brexit altogether. Gina Miller also told BBC Radio 5 Live that she would be interested in taking legal advice on challenging the government if Parliament's meaningful vote on the Brexit deal did not result in a separate Act of Parliament. Now that's a lot of money to splurge on vainly swimming against an ever-increasing democratic tide, isn't it? What do you think? Please leave a comment below. Thank you. Please do like and share this video and also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.